We already looked at <coughs> a few boxes where the carbon gets uh, moved around, uh, atmospheric accumulation, ocean, land, vegetation. We will see a few more details about the ocean carbon cycle. Uh, I won't go into the soil carbon cycle, but uh, let's look at the pathways uh, a little bit before we uh, go to uh, more details. We have already kind of done this. Where is my cursor? I'm losing my cursor somehow. Okay, I don't understand. There we are, the color, oops. The color makes it uh, invisible. <laughs> Here we are, okay. So uh, we already talked about fractionation of carbon. Life fractionates. So we talked about oxygen and how it is used. We ca talked about C14, how it is created and can be used for carbon dating. Uh, and there is the other important one, which is the uh, carbon fractionation during photosynthesis, which we also looked at. We'll just revisit here briefly. So C13 and C12. C13 is obviously heavier. It has six protons and seven neutrons as opposed to C12 which is six and six. So when photosynthesis happens and plants want to capture CO2, uh, use H2O with sunlight to make uh, carbohydrates or sugar, uh, it wants to spend as little energy as possible so it will preferentially take uh, C12 which means the hydrocarbon that is formed, the sugar that is formed is going to be fractionated and is going to be depleted in C13 compared to what's available in uh, the atmosphere. So there is a naturally available fractional amount. So if you look at the overall impact of this cycling of carbon through the uh, photosynthesis and organic systems, then the atmosphere is got a depletion, depletion of about 6.5 parts per thousand. Remember this uh, symbol parts per thousand. So delta C13 is that comparison with the standard that we talked about. So photosynthesis uh, fractionates that and creates a depletion of deficit of 27 parts per thousand. So that's what is in the vegetation. Though that ends up being uh, part of the soils as well. So soil carbon, which is basically what is being generated by photosynthesis and excluded through uh, root systems, uh, microbial uh, system that's in the soil, is going to be at minus 27 parts per thousand. So respiration is going to add that uh, fractionated carbon to the atmosphere. And the atmosphere and ocean are exchanging. So the dissolved inorganic carbon in the uh, ocean which is uh, dissolved CO2 or hydrated CO2, bicarbonate, carbonate uh, and so on, uh, is going to be uh, uh, excess uh, two parts per thousand uh, because of all these uh, interactions including flowing carbon from the land into the ocean and so on. So uh, there is various amounts of uh, uh, delta C13s in different reservoirs. We can use that to look at the uh, evidence for uh, the fact that the increasing CO2 is in fact coming from fossil fuel burning. So nobody can tell you that that's not uh, true. So Mauna Loa Observatory has also been observing more recently the monthly average delta C13 trends. So delta, delta C13 per mil means parts per thousand is uh, getting more and more negative. Why? Because we are pulling up old hydrocarbon which is deficit in C13 exactly for this reason and we are putting it into the atmosphere. So we, it means we are introducing more and more of the depleted delta C13 carbon into the atmosphere. So the atmospheric delta C13 keeps uh, dropping. We had already seen this and here is another evidence that is uh, buried for a longer time in the carbon isotope from the Laudome ice core. So you can see that the ice core also shows that before the industrial revolution there were not that big changes in delta C13 of the gas bubbles stored in the uh, ice cores, but with fossil fuel burning since the Industrial Revolution, uh, the drop is quite significant uh, compared to what was uh, happening before 
uh, anthropogenic activities uh, uh, made a big difference. Uh, of course, we have also seen the oxygen because we are burning fossil fuels in such high quantities. Uh, we are decreasing atmospheric concentration in mag millions of molecules per uh, um, molecules per millions of uh, air molecules uh, so that is also seen and you can see clearly the, uh, uh, the seasonal cycle in it as well in terms of photosynthesis and so on so this is data from Cape Grimm oxygen is not uh, obviously well mixed in, this, in terms of concentrations uh, and like CO2 you can measure it at a few places as well there is also evidence in the ocean for where the uh, CO2 is going so over uh, uh, near Hawaii there is also uh, uh, seawater PCO2 and seawater uh, pH that is being uh, measured more recently. Um, pH is of course a negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration H plus concentration which is a measure of uh, the acidity or basicity of a fluid uh, so uh, higher numbers you are more basic lower numbers you are more acidic and the dividing line is 7 where pure water uh, has a pH of 7 so uh, milk and uh, other things uh, carbon carbonic acid have lower uh, pH and ocean has a, a higher pH so you can see that uh, uh, Mauna Loa is here uh, Aloha is here so that's our uh, famous Keeling curve uh, and along with that we are adding more recently uh, the uh, surface water PCO2 partial pressure of CO2 in the ocean which is increasing because as atmospheric PC, uh, PCO2 or CO2 increases ocean keeps taking up more CO2 as we saw before so surface PCO2 goes up and that creates a reduction in pH because the waters become more acidic which is bad news for many of the uh, species that live in the water. So we'll learn a little bit more about ocean acidification. So other than global warming, ocean acidification is uh, a major concern uh, as well. So in the water, of course, uh, 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 solubility of any gas decreases as surface temperatures increase. You can imagine a Coke can, you keep it cold because you don't want the CO2 to increase uh, in, uh, or get released. It's been put into the uh, Coke with, at high pressure. You seal it because as soon as you open it, the uh, PCO2 in the Coke and in the atmosphere is going to equilibrate at th some time scale, so immediately bubbles start coming out. So why you keep uh, cold is precisely for this reason because at colder temperatures the solubility of the gas is higher okay it's the same thing that happens in any pore water uh, or in ocean waters okay so I will stop this here and come to ocean acidification uh, in the next podcast because otherwise it'll get uh, a bit too long. Uh, so remember that CO2 pathways, of course, it is going into the ocean, into the soils, vegetation, carbon fertilization effect where uh, the CO2 is uh, 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 maybe increasing the accumulation of carbon as well as the the uh, rates of uh, carbon uptake because of the stomatal conductance and so on that uh, we talked about. Of course, wildfires can immediately release all that carbon back and ocean warming is going to reduce the solubility and ocean's ability to take up carbon uh, as well. So degassing of oxygen and CO2 is really happening in the ocean as well. We will see how deep the anthropogenic CO2 is going into the ocean it's not just diffusing in uh, by dissolution there are places where it gets taken up just like we talked about the heat uptake it's not diffusing heat but it is where the heat is taken down when the water sinks or when the uh, deeper waters see the surface and go back so there are places where the communication with the subsurface ocean happens so large part of the atmosphere only sees the surface ocean air sea exchanges of heat and gas 
gases happen near the surface. Deeper ocean is mostly uh, insulated from the atmosphere except on very long time scales where the exchange between the intermediate and deep ocean and the surface ocean happen. So all these things uh, matter. Um, and ocean obviously circulates constantly, which we haven't looked at. But I have an oceanography course on my other channel that you can look up if you're interested in ocean circulation as well. So this is, uh, the again, different time scales, and there are inorganic parts of the carbon cycle and organic parts of the carbon cycle. So we are not necessarily separating the time scales or the inorganic and organic here because for this introduction we are considering all of those things uh, together and we will uh, basically focus on what the impacts are in terms of global warming uh, and so on. Okay.